So let's start here. So if this is what you came for, you're in the right place. If this isn't what you came for, then you're not in the right place, just so you know. Um, so do you struggle with drums or producing drums at all? I know I did when I first started out. So uh, today I'm going to share with you just how you can produce an endless supply of unique drum patterns for your songs. Okay? And it's really easy. Uh, a few tips I'm going to share with you for some unique drum ideas are sampling. Uh, I couldn't think of a better word, so I called it copycat drumming. Uh, and then sound replacement. Uh, there's just a few things. These are more con conceptual, so you get some ideas, and then you can maybe take this and run with it and get some you know, cool sounds from it. And I'll share with you kind of what I've been doing with it. Um, a little bit about me. Trainer, speaker, uncle of four boys. It's a handful, quite a bit when I'm home visiting. Um, just a quick story about those guys, too. I was home over the holidays, and I had my machine studio set up at the house. I, I went, set up, and I put it up, and I was going to start playing with some stuff, so I loaded up some sounds, and, like, those guys were just on it, like, flies, like, they were just, woof, just went right to it. And within, like, 10 minutes, they were already, like, making beats. They were already producing stuff. It was, like, it was really cool to see. Like, I, didn't, I didn't have to tell them much. I was just, like, here's how you hit play. Here's how you hit record. Like, cool, and just started going to town, right? Um, so producing music, has the bar has been lowered quite a bit as far as, like, making music and putting it out there nowadays. You can make it on your phone. You know, so I was in, I was buying another store. I was with uh, my oldest nephew buying a new phone, and they had one of the iPhones in there, and there was GarageBand on it. So I was playing with it, and I had to wait for them to download all the content from my old phone to this one, and it took, like, an hour, and I realized I had so much stuff on there. So uh, I was making some music with them, and we literally had GarageBand. I produced a whole entire like song almost on this iPhone. So it's like it's really easy to produce music. But um, the reason I wanted to share this stuff with you today is is um, taking it a step farther now. So it's it's super easy to get started, but it's you know it's another thing to like make it so it sounds unique and it's kind of ear catching for people and makes them want to keep listening. Uh, and so that was kind of the idea behind this was that. I wanted to give, give people some ideas and things that I've been using in my productions to try to kind of make things more interesting. Welcome, guys. Come on, sit down. Um, so I'm also a DJ. I've been DJing for about 15 years. Um, I was a Red Bull Events DJ for a while, doing a bunch of fun stuff for them. Uh, New Era, uh, there's an event that we started called Battle at Buffalo. Uh, so I was a, a breaks DJ for a lot of b-boy or break dancing events um, back in western New York. So the event that we did... Uh, it's still going. It's been going for like eight years. So I've been DJing a lot. And so that's uh, my background for like breaks and kind of, well, that's kind of what got me into producing too. Um, producer, engineer, all that kind of fun stuff. And so uh, we'll jump into this. I don't want to kill you guys with PowerPoint too much. Um, so I'll just show you a couple things and then we'll jump into some of the concepts and things that I want to share with you guys. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I do have a tendency to mumble and I apologize to people in the back. So if you can't quite hear me, let me know. I'll speak up. Um, so the first, uh, the first thing was sampling, chopping, manipulating drums. Um, breaks, like I said, I was a breaks DJ uh, for b-boy events, and that's kind of how I got turned on to breaks, and then hip-hop music and all those kind of things. So hip-hop largely sampled breaks and used them a lot in music. And so you can still use breaks nowadays, and they're used a lot in music. Um, there was a whole entire genre created off of the Amen break, if you guys aren't familiar with that. Um, check out the Amen break, um, and it was all drum and bass and all that kind of stuff. It was built on this sped up break, uh, this drum break. And then so you can take things like chopping it, rearranging it. You can even just take the break and then move the start point somewhere else, like move it to the two, the three, and it starts to sound like a whole other drum break. Okay, so where do you get breaks? Um, all over the place. Old records. Um, there's actually a site that I found recently called Crate Kings, where they actually list out all the breaks and they have chopped out and played samples of them and they tell you like who the artist is and what the track is. It's crazy like you used to have to like really dig to find breaks like you had to be in like DJs were they would go so far as to cover up the labels on their records because they didn't want you to know where they got their stuff from because they wanted to sound unique and that was the whole thing about DJing before was your records were your records because nobody else was digging and finding those sounds so that was, that's what made you unique and so now and today with producing, it's as easy as making a beat on your iPhone, you know? You have a machine on your phone, so you, can, you have beats in your pockets, so you can make stuff all day. 
So what's going to make you more unique with your sound? You know, how are you going to stand out from other people? Um, and so you can still use breaks and you can still get those unique kind of sounds. Welcome, come on in. Um, another thing, I, I, I couldn't think of a better name, so I called it copycat drumming. But um, I was basically thinking of the way I was, the way I was using it is um, playing other people's drums. Um, so if you're not really good with drum patterns and, and drums just yet, you can always take somebody else's song and just play their beat. You know, you can make their song. Um, you can listen to real drummers, listen to other producers. Uh, other things I've done is like have a song and play along with it. So as it's playing, I'm just taking it in and playing and going over it. So we'll go over some of that stuff. Um, and then <clears throat> the last thing was drum sound replacement, which was applying different sounds to all the usual suspects, I say, because you have kick, snare, hi-hat, boom, dance, boom, you know. Even if you're making like trap beats and you've got all those like crazy like hi-hat snares, all those crazy things going on, you can essentially take those hi-hat sounds and replace them with like snare sounds or replace them with, you know, some other sound. And then it sounds like something completely different, you know. And so it's just basically thinking about how can I take what I already have and flip it and do something different with it. Um, and then you can alter the sounds. So there's, there's things where you'll take the, you know, the snare on the two is like a dry snare and the snare on the four is like a reverbed out, reverbed out crazy snare. And so it's like, it's, it's the same two, four, nothing's changed except you add a reverb to one and not to the other, you know, and it's now it starts to sound like something different. Um, stuff like this though works best with like VSTs and samplers because with drum replacement, you can take the, um, you can just take the sample and replace it with another sample. Or you can take the same MIDI information that you had for this drum pattern and then apply it to some new drums. And so if you're not, the, some of this stuff might be over you guys' heads where you're like, you know, you don't quite get it, but I'll get into showing you guys what I'm actually talking about with this stuff. Because I know a lot of people learn different ways. So this is just kind of showing you in words what it is and then I'll go through and show you actually so, what it's so going on. It sort of like using one sample group to replace different uh, drum sound and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of, there's, there's a, a couple different ways you can do it, and a couple different ways I have done it, where I'll take somebody's pre-existing drum sound, the drums, like they're just playing it, and then I'll turn it to MIDI, and then just replace the sounds with something different. Or you can take a drum pattern that you made and start to replace them, and like a basic kick-snare pattern, you can just take that kick-snare pattern and then start to use different sounds inside of those. You know, so that's kind of like what I'm talking about with that. So then you can even, but then you can also take like, say maybe you have like congas and you've got this really cool conga riff going on. It's cool, like it sounds dope. But then you can take that and make that your hi-hats or take that and make that some other sound. Do you know what I mean? So it's just kind of applying it in different ways. And so those are some of the things that I've been doing with the drums um, just uh, to get some fresh ideas and kind of get new things happening. So um, we'll get down and boogie on some sounds here. I don't have, like I have some different sessions I can pull up and show you guys some of the stuff I've been working on. Uh, but I wanted to start kind of like pretty blank slate. I have a few things in here, but just to start off and then we can kind of build it out and have some fun with it. And so it's not anything too complicated or involved. So you're not like wondering like, well, how do you get this or how do you do that? So we'll start off pretty basic and then I can show you guys some other things that I've done. Um, to maybe give you guys some context on the things that I've already brought up and then uh, if you've got questions then we'll just we'll go through that and answer them kind of as we go or at the end whatever you guys prefer um, let's see so let's start with what was the first one <laughs> that's why I had the notes so I could stay on track um, so the first thing sampling um, we'll get to this so the first thing was sampling right uh, and I do have some drum breaks in here that I sampled. Uh, so if you go here, uh, let's see, I'll pull this up so you guys can actually see what's going on here. All right, so we have machine drum samples. So this is the samples that I chopped up from a drum break. Uh, let's see, this is the, uh, let's see if we can get it to play the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I already sampled, I already chopped it, that's why. Uh, let's do 
music. Oh, oh wait, am I in the right one? There we go. Gotta go to the right folder. Okay, so here's a couple drum breaks in here that I just sampled. Uh, let's do... Okay, so that was the drum break that I sampled for that last one. Pretty basic, or not basic, but if you're just gonna play the sample. Okay, so if you're just gonna play that sample, then that's great, you can load it up, have fun with it all day, um, and just let it loop. But then it gets to be kind of boring, right? So it starts to sound the same. And if you've ever tried to program drums and you're sitting there staring at the same four bar loop and it's like, wow, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, I've, I've definitely been there. I don't know if you got, I've been there a lot of times. And it's like, yeah, it sounds cool. And then it's like, you know, 30 minutes later, you're like trying to make some melodies or something, but you're like so sick of that drum beat. It's like, ah, I need something different going on. So um, I just try to mess around with those things just for my own ears and my own stuff. So here's um, a folder I have with a bunch of breaks in it. Um, just some stuff I chopped and sampled before here. How many guys would like access to these breaks? Okay, cool. Um, afterwards, I'm going to load these up. Um, I'll, I'll load them up to my site. I just, I just set up my website over, or a new website of mine, but this one's just me. It's jrnoble.co. Uh, so I'm going to actually take this screencast that I'm doing right now, this recording for this, and I'm going to load it up to my website, and then you guys can actually replay this if you need to. Um, you can just go there, and then I'll have um, I'll have samples loaded up there for you too. I'll tr I'll try and set up so you guys can just download it right from the site, um, and then you can play around with some of this stuff on your own. And if it works out, then you'll have the video recording of this too. You can kind of play along with and go back through any of this stuff, so you don't have to sit there and write everything down. You can relax a bit and enjoy and take it in. Um, J R N O B L E. dot C O. Uh, forward slash blog if you want to go straight to the blog, but it's this the website's still pretty basic right now I'm still building it out um, So it should be easy to find this one <laughs> All right, so Pretty basic break right um, so we'll go into uh, Let's take this one uh, you guys don't see that all right. Let me click on this go to Where's the sample here? I'm so used to working on machine that I get to see, I get the luxury of seeing everything right here. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Sampling. So when you're chopping samples, it's like you can do all kinds of stuff. You can start to add in all these chops. You can go into different modes. You can see like it's starting to add all these lines in here. And it's just gonna chop everywhere that you see those lines. So if you want to get really crazy and all you want is like the kick and the snare and the hi-hat so you can make your own drum <coughs> kit, you can do that. Uh, but I don't want to get too crazy with this just yet. Let's start really basic here and just go with um, just a really basic pattern. Just something simple like keep it simple and we'll get harder, right? So uh, let's, let's do... So I don't, the only thing I'm missing is like a hi-hat sound. See if I can't get something. Oh, there's one in there. All right, so. Sweet. All right, so I'm going to take this one and just do the edit. So we're going to move it to the start of the hi hat. What's the wrong one? just so we can have a, a hi-hat sound. All right, so then, cool. Apply to this last group. All right, so we've got, get out of pad mode. All right, so then we gotta change the polyphony. So this is some of the things that I do just to clean up the drums. So basically, can you see this? 
So the polyphony is 8. I'm changing it to 1 because when you're messing with samples, um, you're going to have the problem of... So let's take this one. You have things kind of overlapping, which is actually another way to try and make things new unique. You can take that. You know, and that could be a sound in your drums that could totally be in there. Uh, so there's nothing, I don't want you guys to be so super hyper focused on what it is that I'm doing, but take away the concepts and see how you can apply them to what it is that you're doing. All right, so I just like to change the polyphony so, so that way I can keep playing the same thing and maybe stutter it or repeat it and stuff like that. So you can start to play around with the drum sounds like that and start to add it in there. Uh, let's see. So then, which actually there's, I should just do the fast way. Select all polyphony one should be. Cool. All right, so that's done. Uh, so there's a cool feature. You can select all of them and do the same thing to all of them. So I just switched them all to polyphony one. Um, now I have this same break already, oh actually, I have it here, and I've already kind of chopped it up and made a pattern out of it. So these patterns that you're seeing there, this is something I did with that same break. And this is kind of a little bit more involved, I've made more chops with it, and I've kind of like went in and played it a certain way, where I took that polyphony down to one and just made a bunch of stuff. Now I was having a problem with a lot of that overlap and it didn't sound very good um, as I was playing it. So something I did was to just essentially take and make all the all this hi-hat sounds. I just did like a note repeat like this. So then it's like I don't have that extra doo -doo -doo on the end of it and I, it's kind of chopping out these other sounds. So are you guys familiar with choking? Hey, this is going way too deep for me. Um, don't worry about that. Um, so anyways, so basically I have this sound playing so it stops the other sounds and I can get what sounds like a normal drum pattern out of it and it doesn't sound all wonky and weird and crazy. But that's not to say that you can't do that with your own production. All right, um, so let me do, select all. So I'll show you, I'll show you what it sounds like without it. Um, I'll take the choke groups off, and then it might sound really, really weird if I do that. So let's see. Yeah. So it sounds like a whole mess of drums, right? So the only thing I did uh, with that was that I did, uh, let's do none. I just took these ones and I put them all in the same choke group. So basically now it's like, now it'll make sense when I play this back for you guys. Um, all right, so now it's the same thing. Uh, wait, let me make sure I did that to all. Select. Oops. Cool, so now we're gonna play the same thing and it should sound like some actual drums playing. So it sounds like a drum pattern, right? Uh, cool. So that is this same sample that we just messed with a little bit ago. So the same exact thing. Um, the only thing is different is just how I'm playing it and the tempo that I'm playing at. So we just took some regular drums, chopped it, sampled it. Now let's take that same break, like I said, another example we were doing um, is just to simply um, take that break, where we go, music. And let's do, uh, what was that one called? Oh, Kenny Rogers. I think that's that one. Oh, wait, no, we want that one. So I'm going to toss this one in here because it's a little bit faster if I do it this way. Uh, so if we play this in here, let me mute this one. So if we play this one in here, so 
So you see Ableton already kind of grabs it and puts it into uh, the tempo and everything. So now all we can do, we can take this, like I said, same drum pattern, but now we can start to move the play bar around and see if we can't get something that sounds a little bit different if we start it, say, like at this kick right here. So let's start it maybe here and see what this sounds like. So give it a little context. So we'll use this metronome so you can get the sense of like the downbeat. So it sounds really weird if you do it that way. So let's try it on um, the two. I don't know. So you can play around with this, like just move it around. Do you know what I mean? So then your ear wants to kind of bring it back to that one. So you can, like I said, just moving that around, it starts to sound like a different drum pattern. <coughs> You know, because it's starting off differently than it did originally. So now you got the doo doom doom right? So it's just instead of where it was at before, uh, where was it? Here. So it sounds different, but that's just one way of doing it. That's like a really, really basic way of just taking a sample, a loop. You can take basic drum loops. Like if you get drum loops from loop libraries, you can put them in there move the start bar around, see if you can't get some different ideas on it. But you can also chop it up. Um, I recommend chopping it. It's a little more fun to play with, but that's just what I like to do. Um, so that was the other thing. Was I want to make sure I don't miss up anything. So we said different start points. Oh, where to get breaks. I already told you guys about Crate Kings. So Crate Kings is cool. Um, you can up, look up like B-Boy Breaks. Uh, B-Boy Breaks. I have a pretty big vinyl collection and I have like stuff like I said from when I did DJing a lot where I have a lot of breaks so I have those to rely on but also like talking to other people you can find breaks in really weird places like this is a Kenny Rogers track you know what I mean like so some of the break like, I have a ZZ top break in here that I've used before um, it's actually really a really good break um, I don't know if you guys know much about ZZ Top, but this uh, this song called It's Only Love, it's really good. But this is the break. So if you needed like fills for your stuff, cool, you got a, you got a fill at the end of this. You know what I mean? You can start to use that. Just take, uh, and uh, this, I'll bring this into the next part I was talking about, about sound replacement uh, in just a minute. But Say you had, um, cool, let's jump in. Say you wanted to use that drum the snare sound at the end of that, da, 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 that's a great fill, but it doesn't sound anything like your snares for the rest of your track. Not a problem. You got wide open snares you could sample here and replace those sounds for the rest of your snares in there. You know, and then it starts to sound like the same snare going on. But it could be a completely different track where it's like you want different sounds in there, you want it to sound weird. Sky's the limit with this stuff. You know what I mean? Don't box yourself into it's got to be this. I know there's like, I've had that problem where it's like I'm producing stuff with friends or or working with people where it's like they want a specific sound and it's like, yeah, I want it to go like out to the masses of people and like I want it to sound kind of like what's on the radio or this and that. But if you're making music and it's really just about having fun for me, so try it out, see if it works, get crazy with it, you know. Um, because there's enough people in the world making music that sounds like everybody else's music. So you don't need to do that. That's just my take on it, though. Um, oh, this. Uh, so that's only one of the two breaks in that, that one song. Here's another break I want to show you real quick. Uh, it's easy top. This is, a, this is the actual like breakdown in the middle of the song. It's pretty cool. So there's some really cool stuff going on in there. You got like extra little fills and stuff you can steal out of there. Um, and then let's do, let's start by the drum rack. Um, what was the next thing? Oh, I got to keep myself on track here just so, so we're good. Uh, all right, so copycatting other people, playing other people's drums. Um, we can use ZZ Top as an example, but that's kind of a little bit involved. Um, uh, what's a 
Who do you guys like to listen to? It's like a. I feel like there's a lot of like disco y kind of sounding tracks coming out lately. So it's like really easy to make those straight 808 or straight kind of beats, but there's like, I don't know. If you're in hip hop, it's really useful to use breaks because you have a lot of swing and a lot of things going on in the drum breaks already. But let's say you're making like EDM music. You know, how does this apply to you? Well, okay, so then let's get some drum samples. Actually, make this simple. We'll take a really generic kind of joint. Add some generic drums and then add a sample. Oh, uh, let's see. Instruments, groups, not user. So here is, no, not that one. Oh, we don't need, don't need patterns. Not the right kit. Oh yeah, forgot I turned it off. It's good to keep track of when you mute things in a session. Really generic 808 kit. Alright. So let's say starting from nothing. Let's even just do like a four to the floor kind of thing. Let's not do it with that. What else is playing? Oh yeah. Cool. So we don't have that going. Do like something disco y. Alright, let's get rid of the annoying track. So this is, some of you guys might start off here and, and yeah, this is a cool groove. So it's like, yeah, got stuff going on. We got a little swing going on. Super basic. And let's double that. Arrange. So then we'll double it. So a lot of times I'll start really small and really simple and just like start to add things in and change it up. So let's say you get that far. Awesome. Not the greatest sounding beat in the world. Um, let's print that out. I want the. Let's do. Oops. <coughs> Gotta send input. Okay, so let's record it. All right, so you might start there and you might be like, oh, you don't have too much. So then what's some other things that we could do with this? So some of the ideas that I was playing with, um, which actually, uh, let's do, did I print that? Oh yeah, so here's a, a sample of some drums that I had already done. Uh, it was that break I showed for you guys earlier. So this was, Something I was playing around with. Um, oh, 
I know why. So don't need this stuff turned on yet. So you guys remember that beat, right? Okay, so now let's say we've got this going on. This is our some kind of cool. Uh, and then we want to add this. So it starts to give it a little bit of flavor, but it's like it's too much going on. We, we had like a real basic beat and then all of a sudden it gets crazy. Uh, so some stuff you can do is start to like Take that drum break that we did, and we're going to add an auto filter. So now it's like you had this, this really basic beat going on. It was like it sounded really boring, but now it gets a little bit more life because we're adding this drum break that we sampled in there. And we're adding it in a way that it's not taking away from this beat that we started with that's going to be like our primary beat. But now we're adding it in a way that it's just it's, it's accentuating it. All right, so that's like just a little something extra you can start with. And then you can add in little delay throws and stuff like that to really start to make it sound interesting. So there's, 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 no, there's nothing saying you can't do anything. Um, there's no limits to this stuff. All right, so this is just kind of ideas for you guys to take in into consideration and, and possibly use. Um, so drum replacement, sound replacement. So then let's say, cool, we got this beat, but it doesn't sound very meaty. It doesn't sound very good with those drums. It sounds really weak, actually. So with the idea of drum sound replacement now, we can add in, uh, we can take these drums that we already produced uh, over here. All right, so this is, say this is our beat. Let's stop this one. All right, so we don't need sounds. All right, cool. So now we can take our yeah. So this is our our super thumping kick that we got going on here. It's like yeah, beefy, right? Well, we can take that and replace it with something else. Okay, and then even these other sounds that we have going on in there, we can start to play with those. We can start to move, like I said, we can start to add in different sounds. And it doesn't have to just be the same generic beat that's been going on the entire time. Um, so if we browse, uh, can you guys see that? No, okay. So I'll try to do this quickly. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go to samples. I'm gonna go to drums and kicks. something. So there's like, yeah, it's not beefy enough. So maybe that one's like a little bit more. So it gives it a little bit more kind of kick. Well, there you go. You can try that. So if you're making like four to the floor kind of music, then this, this might be like a good Thing to rock with okay so we got like a beefier kick going on but what about that really weak snare that we had let's uh stop this other thing for now too um, say we wanted to use like some weird different sound in there we can do later actually let's do percussion Those are kind of annoying. There, that might be cool. Uh, let's did add that back in. Not quite. So let's say that sounds really generic still. We can even add in some different stuff. And then, uh, where he is? I was hoping to find something really cool in here. Let's do, what was it, percussion? Clubs, congas. Cool. And then let's.
let's do the same thing. We'll double it up. And we'll put it on a different pad. No, that's not the one. Yeah, there we go. Where was that at? Excuse my sounds for a second. Uh, I gotta get through all the rim shots just to get to the snares. There's no way of getting around it. So okay, let's see, we got like a cool side snare, side stick. So we just layered a couple things in there. So now we have some like extra layers so it doesn't sound like just that dunk dunk same boring kind of sound. Alright, so then Let's uh, let's take this, and this is what I like to do. Um, this gives me a chance to do something a little bit different with it. Um, so I usually have this set up so that I'll print stuff. Um, I'll break it out into its own thing. Uh, each individual sound, so the kick, snare, hat. Uh, this is more workflow kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys how it, what your workflows are for stuff yet, but because I'm in Ableton and because I like to produce with machine, um, I find it easiest to work with a machine track, produce in there, and then stem it out and print the audio. Um, <clears throat> and then I can add to and add effects and do all that kind of crazy stuff after the fact. So um, one thing I'll do is I'll just record the kicks down real quick. I'll do that. snares Oops. all right cool so we'll get those got that it's a little hi-hat sound and then we'll be good Stop that too early. Nope. All right. So now we can get rid of this. Okay. And then we can add this back in. So it's starting to sound like a little bit more interesting. Would you guys agree, or is it terrible? I don't. <laughs> let me know. Let me know. It's. Uh, so this is, this is, like I said, this is just starting to take those creative ventures into different directions and trying some different things out. So I kind of had this one already pre-planned where I had this break that I chopped up and made a new sample out of using an old break because it, it would take a little bit of time to do that in front of you guys and I didn't want to waste too much time. Um, but it's applying the same things that I just showed you guys earlier inside of Machine. Uh, so if we go back here, all I did was go in sample this sound, um, yeah, sample this sound, sample this drum break, and then turn it into a pattern here that you can see. And then print, <laughs> I just printed it out as a stereo track. I didn't stem it out or anything, I just made it its own break, kind of like I would normally work with a break inside of Ableton anyways. Um, Wait, how did you turn it into a pattern? Oh, um, so the, the MIDI information here is, is basically, I just played it, it in. it in. Yeah, that's it. So I chopped it up inside of machine, played it in machine, and then printed it into, into Ableton. And so now it shows up as this. So what used to be, um, what used to be this break right here is now this one over here. Well, if I sold it out. So you use different sounds. Original no, those that is the original sample. Oh, yeah, so it's just chopped so up and played back in a different way. That, that sample sound. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, so just to make sure you guys understand that too. So when you're chopping and sampling, you're just taking those original sounds, cutting them up in a way that you can rearrange them into something new. And so that's all I really did there was created something new with that so that I could use that 
as a piece of the puzzle somewhere else. So it doesn't become the entire drum break itself, but it becomes a new kind of piece that I can play with inside of this. I can even take this over here and let's say, let's say I didn't even want to use the entire drum break, but I just wanted to use like certain little fills out of it. I could go in here and start to chop out certain things. Uh, let's do... So like maybe I uh, just wanted that little little thing going on there and yeah so that's like that's the only thing worth chopping out uh, so then I could take that and that's like my little fill at the end of whatever I've got going on for that other so let's say I had uh, where's this at oh yeah so if we pull this in over here drum print kicks all this stuff that could just be my little fill on the end of this So we could do, oops, let's a little, move this stuff out of the way so you guys can see it all. So this is just the same drum loop that we had printed out. We just kind of stemmed it out. So we have just that going on. And you can now make this and turn this into like its own little fill. Um, you know what I mean? And then we could even move it down to the track where we actually had it. Uh, is it this one? Let me make sure I'm on the right track. Yeah. So now it just becomes this little fill inside of the set. So you've got your drums going out. And you got the little echo effect kind of thing going on in there. So now it's just now it's just kind of extra spiciness inside of the overall thing, but you have your same kind of basic drum pattern, and so you don't get sick of it, you've got this in there that kind of adds something to it. And maybe it could be like a breakdown where it's like that's all that's playing. You don't have all this other stuff going on. So it's just like... You know, it's, it doesn't sound the greatest, but uh, you get the idea. So now you can start to add in these little breakdowns, these extra little fills, and all these things from this stuff that you kind of pre-built and pre-organized. And you start to sound way different than anybody else that's making stuff. If they're just getting sample loops out of libraries, it's going to sound like a lot of the same stuff. There's there's a lot of music that I've listened to where it's like it sounds the same as so many other things and the beat for me sounds the same. It's just you know, boom, out, boom. It sounds it's like cool, I got this. And then you rely so heavily on the bass line to get you through, or the vocals to get you through. But when you start spicing it up and adding these other things in there, you don't have to rely so heavily on that. And it gives the listener something else to kind of like give them something to move to or something to, to like enjoy, some other piece of it. And that's, a, for me personally, that's something I really enjoy about music. When I can't just go through it one time and be like, oh, okay, I heard everything. You know, when I have to listen to it again, be like, oh man, I didn't even catch that. I didn't, I didn't believe that they did that. That's crazy. You know, and then you have to re-listen to it again because you're like, wait, what else did I miss? And then listen to it again, listen to it again. And you're just like, you start to pick it apart and... I know that's like probably deeper than most average listeners go through with this stuff, but I think that still separates good music from great music in the sense of where somebody listens to something, even an average listener, they're like, yeah, it was pretty good. And then they listen to it again and like, man, that was great. They don't know why, but they just like, I got to hear that again. You know, it's because they didn't get enough of it the first time. There's so much more for you to process that you have to go listen to it again. Um, and that's just kind of my, my take on it. Um, so uh, where are we at with things? Who has questions? I know I've been talking for quite a bit. Anyway, what's up? What's your take on quantization? Quantization? Yes, um, in EDM. Um, I use it. Uh, I use it when I'm laying down. Like I used it for quantizing those kicks so I can get them laid down. But um, my, my perspective on it is that if you're producing, um, it's, it's good to have groove. To me, there's three elements. There's three basic elements to drums and programming drums. You need the pattern, and then you need, um, you need the, the groove, and you need velocity. So those are like the three things, the three key things for me that you need in there to make it start to sound like something that's not very generic. Because there's music where it's like, it's just, it's on 10 the whole time, and that's all you hear is doom, doom, and it's, it's going straight. And I'm not, I'm not calling out EDM per se, but I hear it in like, in trap music, I hear it in um, I even hear it in like some real basic like kind of hip hop beats too. It's just the same kick snare, you know, going on for like th 
three minutes, and it gets really boring. Uh, so velocity, quantization, or velocity, groove, and the patterns. Those, to me, are the three things that you should be focusing on with drums in order to get them to sound better. If you hit all three of those things, you, add, you got a cool pattern, you add some groove to it, and then you have some different velocities going on in there, you change things up a bit, it gives your ear more to kind of like to pay attention to. And it's not like, you know, a minute and a half into it, like, okay, it's the same thing I heard in the very first verse and first chorus, you know? That's, that's kind of my take on it. As far as quantizing things, I think that's fine. If not everybody knows how to play drums and play it, you know, and get a good groove, but there's groove templates. You can steal grooves from other, other drummers. You can steal, um, you can use the swing out of like the machine. I'll use that. Um, so uh, are you guys familiar with Groove Pool in Ableton? Who here is an Ableton user? Who here is like Logic? Or what else do we have? Anybody Cubase? Anybody Persona? Uh, what is it? Steinberg? Um, anybody else? Pro Tools primarily? Yeah, I know Christian. <laughs> uh, so there's you can apply grooves in pretty much any DAW nowadays. It's, it, you don't need to just quantize everything on the on that um, on the grid because I feel like it loses some of its life when you do that. Because the the best the the best music I like listening to is a lot of like funk and soul, and it's got that swing. It's got that human kind of feel to it, you know. And it's like. It's, that's the kind of stuff that makes you want to start moving. If it's just like this the whole time, it's just like, you know what I mean? You just kind of like, uh, okay, I can move to this. And then I rely personally, like I dance. I, I like to dance. I've been breaking for, I don't know, like 15 years now. But I, I like groove. And then if it's, if it's a very stiff kind of strict beat, then I have to rely on other parts of the music to play off of. So I'll listen for the bass line or I'll listen for the melody. I'll listen for the lyrics. Um, but... To me, drums can really, drums are the groove of the song. Like, they are the driving force. You shouldn't have to rely on the bass line. You shouldn't have to rely on the melody. Do you know what I mean? So, like, for quantization, I feel like it's good to get started, but it's kind of like training wheels. Okay, now you've got it on the grid. It sounds like a beat. Let's do something with it and turn it into something that actually makes you want to move. So that, that's my take on it. Um, any other questions? That was really long-winded, sorry. <laughs> yes? Yeah, but I kind of have a, a technical question. Yeah. I've been using the machine for a couple of years, and mm -hmm. then couple, like six months ago I got Pro Tools. Yeah. And I installed Pro Tools, and it came with Avid and, and stuff like that. I installed all that. And then I went to try and open up my machine, and it just it wouldn't, it would just keep jumping up at the dock, and it wouldn't start. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I looked up a couple of videos and stuff like that, and I ended up having to go into, like, my audio and then, like, my HAL and then, audio components, something like that, and I had yeah. to remove my Avid Core plugin for me oh, to, wow. yeah, like delete it for me to open up the machine. Hmm. Like, so anytime I want to go back to Pro Tools, I have to re like drag it back into that folder and then and then I could like I guess use whatever plugins like Avid comes with. But Yeah, that's that's a trip. That sounds like a that sounds like a machine question. Like, have you hit up their their support? Yeah, I looked on the support groups and they said um, they've been dealing with this issue since like last November or something like that. Cause oh wow! Because it's not compatible or something. Yeah, uh, that, that happened to me. Yeah. But I don't know how it, it started working. Huh. It just started uh, one day. It just worked. What Pro Tools are you in though? Uh, uh, Version. Um, I installed eleven and now I'm in twelve. Okay, and which one are you using? The, uh, the newest one, twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe you should talk. You should. You should talk then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just started working for you, like just yeah, upgraded and turned control. Which version of twelve are you on then? Um, I, I went to twelve point one. I'm on now. I'm on twelve point three. Okay, and you're on same. I think so, yeah. Could huh. you possibly like update the machine too? So. Yeah. Yeah. They, okay. Yeah, maybe they fixed it by now, and I just keep doing it for no reason. Like it may even be messing with my computer, just taking it out every single time. Yeah. And restarting my laptop, but. Yeah. I would check the updates. And start there, yeah. uh, see if, and talk talk to Kevin um, and see maybe if, if you guys can meet up and see where you're see if it's a similar setup. Um, that's the the weird thing about Pro Tools um, is that it's and, and that's the the interesting thing about DAWs. Like I'm running 10.8.5 on my computer because I still have Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools 11 on my computer, and in order to run them side by side, I have to be on 10.8.5. But that means like everything else isn't like caught up, so my Ableton 
it still works. Everything's good there and all that stuff. But this is like an alchemy nowadays when it gets to working inside of the box and working, you know, uh, in your DAW of choice. Because once you start getting VSTs and once you start getting these, uh, um, these plugins and all these kind of things to add in there, it's like, well, okay, this is the plugins I use, but these guys haven't caught up to where max at yet and this guy these guys haven't caught up to where ableton's at yet and these guys you know it starts to be this kind of guessing game of well where's everybody at am i in the right spot so i trust me i know that <laughs> i know how that feels but um it's good once they get on the same page and then you just kind of ride it out for a bit until like something else new comes out <laughs> um but yeah be just always pay attention to what version that you're in and um and just uh, compatibility issues. But that's a weird one, I haven't, I haven't heard that one. So yeah. Um, I, I thought it was especially weird because I always heard that you can uh, remap the machine, uh, the hardware, work, like, to work with Pro Tools. Huh. So I was yeah. kind of confused with that aspect, like the fact that they didn't really work compatible with each other. Yeah, like uh, the cool thing with me, with me is I usually, I'll just, I'll flip this into MIDI mode mm -hmm. and then I can control stuff in here. Um, through Ableton, yeah. So if I have like this, I can do all that just from here inside of Ableton now. I don't have to, and I can flip back um, into into machine and start working from machine, which is kind of cool. When you do that, your sounds are still coming from the machine, but you're just recording them into Ableton. Oh, which part? Like right now, when you're triggering it, your sounds are still coming from the machine, not from Ableton. Yes. Um, so all this stuff that I made right here. Uh, all these things, all these uh, clips that you see here, those are all from machine imported into into Ableton. Right. Just kind of printed them in here, because that just gives me now some some extra control. Like I can I can work inside a machine and do that stuff, but I kind of prefer working inside of Ableton. I can have like effects chains and stuff, and they're really easy to access. Um, that's just the workflow that I use. If you're in the machine and you're used to working inside of there, cool. It, it just it all depends. Um, was uh, sorry, I lost track a little bit. So I think the only oh one of the other things I was talking about was replacing sounds now. Um, so if we had let's say let's go back to this drum pattern. I'll just stop everything. Um, so let's go here and we'll get rid of this. We'll go back to. Here, okay, we got that pattern loaded up. All right, so now let's do, let's take this pattern and we'll duplicate it. So now we have, okay, we have the same thing, but we're gonna do something different with the hi hats. So we'll start, we'll just start replace it, and we'll try. Um, okay, we'll use this one, and all I'm gonna do is just change this hi hat pattern. Let's do There's a hobby. hobby. Is it Javier Vasquez? Okay, cool. Glad we settled that. <laughs> All right, so we have, um, I'm just adding in a different hi hat pattern just to make it sound a little bit different. And then what we'll do is we'll change the sound. So let's say we've got that, but we don't really like it. Um, and then we can even, let's do it like trap style a little bit. So now we can take it and add in a new sound. So it starts to change the dynamics of it. So we're doing, So then we can just go through and load in some different sound. Uh, let's do, let's try a shaker. Why not? Not really bad. So now let's say, okay, we wanted to do something like that. So now you can take the same thing and it sounds different because not just that same usual hi-hat sound because maybe you're used to just making that same kind of hi-hat pattern for things. But if you want to break out of that, try a different sound. Like put something new in there. Okay, make it sound different. Um, 
And like I said, these are all just conceptual ideas. I just want you guys to take this and see where you can run with it because the sky's the limit with this stuff. It's, it's like if you've been doing the same thing over and over, it start, it's now it's time to start thinking about, well, how can I do it differently or what can I do differently to try and make things sound more interesting. Um, let's say, so every, every four or eight bars is always good to put like a little breakdown or something different in there. Um, Dude. Wait, some great sounds, by the way. <laughs> oh, let's go back to range pattern. Let's double it one more time. And then we'll get to the end of it. Oh, let's do. And we'll just erase some of this stuff. We can add a little <coughs> drum break at the end of it or something. So now it's like you're starting to, the, the, the idea is you started with something simple and you're trying to make it add to it, make it more interesting, right? Um, now that little tag, I, I, I like to call them tags. It's just to add an end of it. It just changes up the pattern just enough to like kind of break things up, but then it doesn't do it so, so much that it loses the person, but you just kind of keeps the groove and then it's like, oh, wow, something new, and then gets back into it again. And so... So it's like, that doesn't sound super great, in my opinion. Um, but then you can start to go in now. and Okay, well, cool, we have something. And it's, it's better to start with something than it is to sit there and think like, oh, crap, okay, well, what could I do next? Because I, I don't know about you guys, but I've done that, I don't know how many times where I'm like, well, I should add something here. I just, I don't know what to add yet. So I'll just play it and I'll just keep it looping. Like, uh, okay, well, maybe I could do, I don't know. Oh, okay, maybe I could, maybe I could do, you know. So you run into this cycle of like thinking about, well, what could I do? I could do this. Well, I could do that. Just throw something in there. You know, just keep things moving. Like uh, there's a five-minute rule that I, I picked up off of somebody where if, if you're spending more than five minutes trying to find a sound or create something or do something, it's time to move on. It's like if it's not there yet, it's not going to get there. You're just going to keep kind of working yourself down in this little hole and not getting anywhere. So don't kill the creative vibe. Keep it going. Um, and so like, it's better to add something than to add nothing. Just do it. it. Even if it sucks, just do it. And then maybe take this same pattern. Okay, cool. We added that little tag on the end of it. Not the greatest. Then we'll just go to pattern. We'll go duplicate and then cool. We'll just start over again. We'll just get rid of that little tag on the end and add something new. Okay. Create like four or five of them until you find something that's good, but don't stop just to think about like, well, I could do this, you know? and then keep things going that way. So then it's like, cool, I've got that little tag on the end of it. I don't like it per se, but I can change it. You know, we can add some sounds in there. Uh, and then the only other, what was it? Not the only other thing, but uh, let's see. Oh, snares were, let's see. Let's do this. Oh, we already have snares over here. Okay, cool. So let's say one other thing I want to show you is Altering the sound. So we, we talked about replacing the sound. Um, talk about drum adding in drum breaks and stuff like that. But you can also alter sounds a bit. And I think we kind of did it already. Um, but this is another way of altering sounds that, that I've used. Um, and it, it works pretty well. So let's say we'll take out... Uh, let's just do this. We'll double this track. And then we'll take out like every other snare on one and keep it in on the other. And then we'll take out these ones on this. So then you can do like that. And then we'll do that. 
we'll just take these both and move them over. Okay, so then now I have these. I'll call them a little bit different so that way I know which one's which. So now they look a little bit different. Um, so now what you can do is, if this is our drum, drum pattern, let's just say, do I have anything on here? Let's keep that. Okay, so now let's do, let's add the delays to just this, uh, let's do it to this one. Yeah. So I think I had delays on C. Yeah. Uh, go here. So I'm going to just change this up a little bit so that way it, it it's more pronounced so you can really hear it. Uh, so we'll add a little bit more of the in. And we might change the time here. So then this is the delay. So I just have this adding to the drums. Normally I would do this like right on it too. Like I would do it right on the track just to make it easier. Actually here, let's do that. Audio effects, simple delay. We'll make this easy. Oh, I didn't loop them. Okay, so I'm taking what I did, just so you guys can follow along, hopefully. Hopefully you're understanding what I did. I took the snare, there's four snares, and I just took the first and the second and took them out of one, and I left it in on the others. So this is playing, uh, let's see, these snares are playing on every two, and these snares are now playing on every four. But what I'm doing is the ones that are playing on four, I'm adding a delay in there, so now they sound, I'm altering the sound a little bit, just to make it sound a little bit different. Uh, let's see. So let's put a little feedback on that so we got it. You know what I mean? So now you can you can start to hear it's starting to add something in there. Maybe we could just even do add some saturation, fatten up one of them, do something crazy. Uh, soft sign, that's fine. And compress it a bit. You know, so then you can start to do things to one sound that are different than the other. So does that make sense? Did I lose anybody? Are we good? Okay. Um, and yeah, that, that's kind of the idea with that. So now we have this drum loop that started off as something rather weak and didn't sound too great, but now it's it's starting to get it's starting to have some life to it. Um, and then we can even add that drum sample back in there too. And you can even like auto map the filter to start moving around. You know what I mean? So now, now you're you're taking this and you can automate this and move it around. So it's changing that sound as time goes on. So now it, it sounds like it's something completely different, it's starting to morph and start to do different things. Okay. Um, and so those are the some of the the ways that you can take these things and get crazy with them and to kind of take things off the deep end, you know, and really start to have some fun with this stuff. So if you get lost in these like really basic concepts or these, even if you have trouble just starting off, you know, like, like one thing, um, one thing I would suggest here, uh, like uh, something else that I mentioned too, was um, playing along with other people's songs. This is actually something I did. I had, uh, I like to go on SoundCloud and I like to listen to other producers. I like to check out what they're making and stuff like that they're doing. Check out the infamous Tito, Tito Sanchez. Always listen to his stuff. <laughs> um, but I'll listen to their stuff and hear what it is they're doing, what patterns they're using, what drums they're using, what sounds they're using, how are they changing sounds up, things that they're doing. But if I get a, a lost, like I did this one time where I was listening to a SoundCloud song and I was just like, oh, it's so dope. And I actually happen to have my uh, uh, machine next to me and I just started hitting like a kick snare pattern. I was like, oh, cool, this is dope. And I wasn't necessarily playing exactly what they were playing, 
but I was playing what I felt like, oh, this would be cool with this song. And then I took that and I started to record it. And then when I turned off the song, I had my own drum beat. And I was like, oh, cool, I can start with this. And then it's off to a new track. So when it comes to making, at least producing with drums, there's a lot of different ways and approaches you can take to doing this stuff. And there's like, there's so many things that you can do nowadays to make it sound different and not just be stuck in this like, okay, same kick snare pattern that's been going for the last two minutes of this song and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be that repetitive. Um, and even if, you know, I, I don't know where everybody's skill levels are at, but it, it's, not, it's not so far-fetched that, you know, all this stuff that I'm doing, you can essentially do. Um, I try not to make it too involved and too crazy, so that way it's like, it makes sense, you can do it, it's not something too far-fetched. I'm not like stretching, um, warping, and doing all this crazy stuff. I'm just taking a sample, chopping it up. If, if you have a, any kind of uh, virtual sampler, so if in here they have what's called a sampler, uh, instruments. You can actually take a sampler. The drum rack is kind of another one of those. So you can load up samples in here, play them just like you would on this, on the machine. It's just the same thing. You see it's the same layout, all the cells. You have the same tools available to you in pretty much every DAW nowadays. It doesn't matter if it's Fruity Loops, doesn't matter if it's Reactor, it doesn't matter if it's whatever, uh, Logic, any of that stuff. Um, you have those tools available to you. So you can do essentially all this stuff, even if it's Pro Tools, and if you're not using machine. Let's say you just have Pro Tools and all you're staring at is this. Well look, I've got, I've got drum pattern. Now all I have to do is to just edit and arrange it. I just chopped out this little sample right here, you know, and stuck it in there. Now it's copy and paste. Okay, it's moving things around, having some fun with it, playing around with some ideas, pulling in some different sounds. It's like, oh, maybe I don't like these snares, let's see what they sound like with, I don't know, some other sound that I have. Like I have a whole um, sound pack of uh, other stuff. And this is the other thing too, be careful about getting sample packs and, or samples off of other people because then you end up like me where you have like a ton of stuff. I have, uh, let's see, uh, if I go into music, this one, I literally have two different folders right now because I never even finished going through them. This one that's drums is all drum samples of like that I've put together and that I've gotten from other people that I still have yet to go through and finish sorting through. So the, yeah, right? So I have to finish sorting through that. In either, so I could spend the next couple of years trying to just sort through that. You're better off just getting started. Take whatever you have and just start doing something. You know, I have these, I've, I've managed to go through and start getting some stuff and it's cool. Uh, the one thing I would say is, is here, you can start to come across some really cool kits and stuff. Um, factory, I think this one is it? Yeah. So this one you have like air drills and like anvils. So maybe I don't want a snare yet, but I want like an anvil drop. You know, maybe that sounds cool. So like starting to get outside of the box essentially, not just buying sample packs and not just taking drum loops and all these kind of pre-made kind of things, but you, you have the power in front of you to do all of this stuff and create it on your own you know, and, and just do it. It's just a matter of applying um, stuff and trying things out, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like ABC, you do this, 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 and this every time. You know, you can start with that. I definitely recommend starting a little structured and feeling it out and getting the, the feel of it, but then start to take it in a new direction. Start to try other things, okay? Start to replace the sounds with samples. Like, um, if we go back to the drum kit, um, so, like, it's really easy to just take, let's say I had... Um, a snare here that I didn't like, well, it's really cool. I can just take that snare sound and replace it with that anvil sound. Now I have the same drum pattern, same things going on, but I'm just putting a new sound in there. And it's that simple. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's just like, oh, cool, I don't like this sound anymore. I want to try this one. Boop, just drop it in there. You know, and technology is just that easy nowadays. And so I just wanted to share that kind of stuff with you guys. Um, I, don't run, I don't want to run too late. I know we have till 7, but I wanted to leave it open for like questions and and things like that. And so you guys, um, you guys have already been, already been great. I appreciate the questions you guys already had. Um, and if you guys, if you guys have more questions, let me know. But I kind of want to close it out with that for now and just say, because um, I don't want to overload you guys with too much stuff. Uh, but was, was that good for you guys? Did you guys get enough out of that? Okay. Was there, was there anything useful at all? <laughs> okay. Oh, what's up, Roger? What's that?
Oh, 808s. So I didn't really dive too much into 808s today. Um, it was more about like, because uh, the thing is, it's the 808 is just another sound. It's just a sound like any other. Uh, so if I go here, let's see where I'm at. It, oh, wrong one. So you can add in 808s. The, 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 the big thing to remember about 808s is that 808s nowadays, the way production is going on, is 808s are like another melodic instrument. They're being used for the bass line. Doom, 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 all that kind of stuff. So they're being pitched around, and then you have all this. You know, you're like playing around with all these different sounds, and you can. So you can start to use it like a melodic instrument. You don't need a bass guitar anymore. You've got 808s. You just make an 808 pattern, you know? And that can kind of replace the, the bass. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. I didn't really program 808s, but look at 808s the same exact way. You know, okay, so I have these 808s. Cool, I made this sound. Maybe I'm not too stoked on that 808 kind of being the bass. So then I just take the 808, I replace it with a kick, so I have that same kick pattern. So maybe I have that same kick pattern, but now I just pull out a bass synth and start to play it with something else. So it's like the 808s, you can use those the same way. You can make it all 808s. You can use the 808s to make something else. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. So it's just a matter of what you choose to do with it. That's really what it comes down to. Um, you don't have to do it like everybody else. You can do it like everybody else. And that's one of the things I mentioned too is playing other people's drums. You can, you can literally go and program your drums to sound just like somebody else. Do the same exact way, just so you can learn how they did it. And then take those sounds and put some different sounds in there. You know, like if you're into 808s, make an 808 song that sounds just like your favorite 808 track, like any of the stuff that's on the radio nowadays, you know, DJ Mustard. Play something that makes sounds just like that, and then take it and put like cat meows in there <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? Like start to do something different with it. Take it somewhere else. Have some fun with it. That's really what it's about. Uh, so that's really kind of all I wanted to leave with you guys. If you guys have questions, ask away. Like, let's. Uh, uh, more than happy to answer any other questions you guys, you guys have. What's up? What are some uh, effects that you find yourself commonly using, like uh, the compression EQ? What are some that you use a lot for drums that, that really make it sound the way you want? Uh, saturation, for sure. Nowadays, if you're making electronic music and you want stuff to hit hard, um, here's a really, uh, really cool free plugin. I know people dig free. Soft tube, saturation knob. Um, that's a really good one. I uh, just crank it up. That's a good one for thickening <coughs> things up and adding in. Um, uh, a chain that uh, I was told a long time ago was EQ distort compress. So EQ something, distort it, compress it. That's kind of like an EDM kind of like thing that they do. But I would go so far as to say is now it's like EQ um, distort, saturate, compress. You know, it's like saturation is kind of like the thing that from people that I've talked to and, and listened to, um, stuff that they share. Saturation is a big thing. Um, compression and EQ are the two things that will kill or really make your sounds sound great. Um, I've been mixing and engineering for a bit now, and so I understand EQ and compression way better than I ever did. And those are the two things that if you want stuff to sound more clear, you want to punch through better, those are the two things you really want to get to know. Like if you get those down really well, um, you can start to do some real damage on making things sound good. Um, so that would be my suggestion. Those, those are the things I go to a lot. As far as effects, I mean, effects nowadays, you have crazy stuff. Like I picked up um, this one off of Native Instruments recently. Uh, who else has this one? Molecular? It's in Reactor. So, so if you go into Reactor effects, there's... Um, Is that recent ensembles molecular? This one's really cool. Um, if you want to like manipulate sounds and make them sound weird and crazy, you can like drop different things in here. Um, but really, like, if you understand the the kind of the core of like what these effects are, all these buttons and knobs don't don't seem so crazy anymore. Because the one thing I've learned is that there's reverb, there's delays, there's phasers and flangers, and 
maybe one or two things I'm missing. But for the most part, it's like reverbs, delays, phasers, flangers. And those things are now used in combination to make these things. And so like it starts to seem really crazy because you're like, oh my god, there's all these knobs and all this stuff we can do and adding this and doing that. And But you can essentially, you can make your own thing that does something like this. They just automate some of the stuff in here. So like <coughs> these knobs, you'll see like this one's kind of wiggling around right here. All, you're, all, you can, all you have to do is take, you can take stock Ableton stuff. You can add in phasers, flangers, delays, reverbs, all this stuff, manipulate them, add some re, um, automation, and make them do something crazy. You know, it's just taking the time out to do it. So, you know, if you don't want to take the time out to do that and you want some presets and throw it on there and, and have fun with it, get something like Molecular. It makes your life a lot easier. And not just that, but like those plugins that do those sort of things. Like I love Sound Toys. Sound Toys is a plugin bundle that I use a lot. So I go to these ones, Crystallizer, Filter Freak, um, all these kinds of things. Uh, so I have <coughs> this one that I use. I'll say that. So I, I put a um, Filter Freak on this one synth, and it totally changed the sound of it. Um, so it sounds completely different now. And it's just a, it's just a matter of applying these tools in different ways. But all the all that it did is it applied a a filter, like a, a low pass filter, and it, it automates, it moves it around. So I'll show it to you just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, is it? Oh, it's on. Yeah, so this guy right here, if you look right here, it'll start moving around. So, and I'll turn this off so you can hear what it sounds like with and without it. So it's like a really basic kind of bass line. Oops. Oops. So, and this is with saturation, so it makes it a little bit thicker. And then you'll see this will start moving around. So now it makes it, it's like a whole completely different vibe. It's not the same instrument anymore. And all it is, if you look at it, it's just a low pass filter that automates. It gets triggered when the sound comes in to, to move up. And that's all it's really doing. And you could do the same thing with, uh, with um, what is it? If you go into audio effects, you have an auto filter. I can add that in there and I can just automate this thing to do that. Same thing. It's no different. It's just a matter of applying this stuff and how you're applying it. You can apply it however you want. Um, this is actually this break right here. Uh, this is cool in the gang break. This is like what I was telling you guys about taking breaks. And what I did was actually I played this break using machine. I added it, I, I made my own drum break, but it's the same exact drum break. If you listen to the Cooler Gang original, this sounds the same exact thing. I just wanted a cleaner sample of it. So I wanted to put my own drums into it. So I didn't have anything extra like the little noises and stuff. Cause that's the thing you come across with breaks. You have somebody yelling in the background or you have like some little guitar riff kind of going, going over the top of it. But I just took it and played it and I'm like, cool, I have these drums, and now I can do something different with it. So I, I did the same thing where I, I have it playing, and I have that, I just have that auto filter on it, that bandpass it, and now it's, it sounds different. You know, it's the same exact drums. It sounds a little bit cleaner, but I can add it into what's going on with all this other stuff. So you get, you see how it just adds a little, so if I take it out, it sounds like something's missing. It sounds like a really basic kind of beat, but once you add these drums in there that are doing something different, it's like your ear has some more to kind of to listen to, so it makes it sound more interesting. So it's not, it's not adding anything much more to it, but it just gives it that little something extra that's going to make it start to stand out. So does that help you guys? Um, sorry, I think I've talked way too long on that stuff again. <laughs> yeah? Uh, this is kind of a basic question, but yeah. is there a way, like for example, a kick or a snare or something like that, you know how on the machine you can turn the pitch down and mm -hmm. it'll, you know, it'll make it sound lower and, and deeper? Is there a way to do that without slowing it down? Like, well, sample vocals and go on and I want to make it like deeper. I you have to think about what it's doing there. Yeah, consider what it's doing there. Because if you're spreading it across the keyboard, 
it's taking that one sample and it's it's pitching it down but as you're pitching it yeah it's stretching out the audio yeah. so it's going to be slower because over it has to play the the waveform over a longer period of time to give it that effect uh, you can pitch it down so let's see oh here here's a good example I have um, I took just one vocal sample inside of here and all it's it's just this dude yelling uh, so it's just this right here but you hear how it's like it's got to take longer I could actually take it so I have his sample right here if you see it uh, let's see I think it's this one too yeah so I have this and what I could do actually is I could I'll solo this out and then I could transpose it down say an octave So that actually kind of keeps it in time and it slows it down. Transposing, that's what it's called? Yeah, so I'm transposing, but I'm not putting it across a keyboard because the keyboard won't keep it in time like that. So I left it inside of Ableton and I let Ableton say, hey, keep it within this time, but it's played at this lower pitch. Okay. And it's, 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 does it have that same thing in the machine? Like it's transposing and just yeah. do the same thing? Yeah, uh, I think you have to load it up a different way. Uh, I usually do it in Ableton, that's why I'm, I'm not thinking of how to do it right now, but if you go into the sampler, edit, slice, oh, that's what it is, so, um, oh, it's when you sample it, not necessarily when you sample it, but if you go into, um, there you go, if you go into pad mode, um, and turn it into a keyboard, uh -huh. well, no, that, that does the yeah, same thing, that's, that's what yeah, so you go into, you make it a sample, and then you pitch it down, basically, mm -hmm. Christian. If you pitch it down and slow it down, you can also time stretch it back faster again. I do that sometimes. Okay. You pitch it down and you stretch it and speed it back up. Oh, yeah. So you know what I mean? When you pitch it down, yeah. you have it down, and then if it's printed that way, then you just time stretch it back up. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of a two-step process, and I know yeah, I know what he's talking about. It's so it's can you see it? Yeah. So it's just basically like you chop, you take this, you say I want to pitch it way down, mm -hmm. and then you tell it, well, okay, I want it to play in this time. So you speed it up, like you'll yeah. You can play it like in the keyboard. Play the MIDI note, right? On whatever like low you want it. Like if it's a kick and you want the 808 to drop, uh -huh. drop it down. And if it's too long, then you go into the time stretch and then stretch it out, make it faster. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Sweet. What's up? Uh, when you say you you play it in, do you do like the first pass? Do you do like drum and snare and then layer in other ones on top, or do you do a bunch of instruments the first time through, or what's your what's your way to that? Um, good question. There's a, uh, yeah, there's, there's a, a few different ways to do it. So it's all, I guess, I would say it's kind of more on your preference uh, and maybe even your skill level necessarily. I like to play around finger drumming and I like to just kind of like, I'll play the, the hi-hat kick snare because I can just kind of basically um, lay that stuff out. And just, if I have an idea, then I can just do, oops. Do I have that? How's that one going? Oh, I turned it off. So I can, so I can sit there and play around with like, if I have something playing, I can sit there and just like, okay, I want to play with this. But a lot of times, yeah, I might just like, okay, just kick, just snare, and just hi hats. It depends on how I'm laying, how like what I want to do with it. But I'll start with like a basic kick snare. And like I said, I'll try to I'll start real basic, and I'll just make it more complicated as I go. I'll add stuff in, um, and I don't know if you guys have ran into this problem, but I have a problem with I try to put too much stuff in. You know, I'll make it really busy, and I'll just like I have all this stuff going on, and so what I do is I'll just add in whatever I feel like adding in, and start pulling stuff out, and then it's like okay, now I've got this to work, and then it's like I just kind of like pull out things until it sounds like oh yeah, this is kind of cool, and so I guys I've run into that problem where it's like. If I don't put enough in, then I feel like, well, crap, i got to add more. So I just just do it. Just throw stuff in there until I feel like, okay, this is too much. And then if it's too busy, like I do it with bass lines a lot, where I'll, like, I'll just do, 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 I have crazy bass lines, and then I'm like, okay, i got to pull it back a bit. Because it's like, if you had crazy, like all these drums going on, all this bass going on, you make it too busy, and then, you know, lose people. Um, but, yeah, I, I would start with basic kick snare and then add in some hi-hats or something, and then start to, I'll double it, and then add a little change up, double that, add in something else, and start to build it out to where I have like an eight bar loop, and it doesn't sound the same the whole way through.
So, uh, anybody else? No? Cool. Um, like I said, I appreciate you guys taking the time out to come out here to spend this time with me. Um, because your questions help me too. I mean, and, and this is, like I said, it's kind of an open format where, you know, we get people helping each other out, answering questions, and that's great. I love that. Um, so it's, it's not just me up here like, yeah, there's all this stuff you should do this, do that. This is more like, hey, here's some ideas, you know, run with it, have some fun with it, and come back and hit me up later and let me know, like, what you tried, what, you, what worked, what didn't work. Um, that'd be awesome. I appreciate that. So, um, like I said, jrnoble.co, you can check me out there. I'll take this recording because it's still it should still be going, um, and I'll take this recording. I'll upload it up to my site. You guys can go back, replay this. Uh, I'll upload some breaks for you guys to mess around with. Um, you got questions? Hit me up on there. My social media is all the same now. It should be Jr Noble N O B L E official. That's on Instagram, Twitter, any of that stuff. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to hit me up, you got questions. Be more than happy to help you out. Um, I think that's about it. Anybody else have any questions? Anything that doesn't make sense that maybe I covered that you guys were like, what the heck? Um, no, cool. Uh, like I said, I'll put this up online. You can go through it. If you come up with questions later, hit me up. All right? So thank you guys. Appreciate it.